kind of funny when you look at it when you're not in a dark place. Eeyore energy. They were like oh. naked in the street, which is honestly not like, her being It's naked. funny. I think this is the best way I could even say what my Zoloft dreams are kind of like. Ramble. Basic. Thank you to Apartments.com, Omaze, Macy's, and All Right for sponsoring this week's episode of Pretty Basic. You're listening to your favorite podcast. Pretty Basic. With the most rental listings anywhere, there's no wrong way to get into your right place on Apartments.com. For instance, you could latch a tablet to the wall and throw magnetic darts at the rental search map. Or you could lather your phone screen in peanut butter and let your furry roommate lick their way to a tasty new pet-friendly place. Or you could use a tablet like a spirit board and call upon your beloved light Nana so she gets her say too. And now Apartments.com even offers virtual tours so you can explore your potential place from anywhere with an internet connection. At a bar on a bad first date? <laughs> Knock yourself out. On a tandem bike pedaling along the beach? <laughs> not advisable, but certainly not impossible either. Around base camp at Mount Everest, now that's nearing the summit of all the ways you can search. From the tried and true methods and the virtually enhanced techniques to the downright unorthodox approaches, you're bound to discover that special somewhere to call your own on apartments.com, the most popular place to find a place. Welcome back to Pretty Basic. You have your favorite co-hosts. Hi, my name is Remy Ashton Cruz. Hi, my name is Alicia Marie. We may have some new, you know, viewers. I feel like we've been doing this for quite some time now, you know? We are, we're coming up. Actually, this month marks our third year. Did we start in October? Yes, October 18th, 2019. Why do you remember that so well? Like 2018. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 2018. Because you made me do a countdown, like, remember... We yeah, had to do the countdown. I'm sorry, she said you made me. We had, no, 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 she didn't make me. <laughs> I did. She highly encouraged a countdown, and I remember just highly anticipating the day for so long. But 10, 18, 18. <gasps> I hope I'm not wrong here. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Your face. <laughs> Please continue on, continue on. Yeah, so if you're new, welcome. Don't forget to watch the video on youtube.com slash pretty basic podcast and you know, subscribe. Subscribe. We've been making awesome videos and it's been really fun. And we put makeup on just for you. So please No, watch. I have, I have to say. <laughs> we have a bone to pick with you yes, guys. Yes. Our producers were like, girls, listen up. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. They, no, said, it, they is... said it so nicely. No, they but... knew. They were like, Hey girls, so <laughs> hey girlies, hey mom. Everything's everything's going great. You're doing amazing, sweetie. <laughs> However, we have noticed, um, you know, analytically, when we're looking at, you know, the you know the analytics, logistically of, speaking, logistically speaking, data, we have numbers, noticed math, math. <laughs> we have noticed that the the YouTube videos, you know, now that you have a beautiful studio and we're posting these these podcasts on YouTube, we've noticed that. <laughs> The videos where you actually look good and get ready kind of perform a little better. So we're not saying you sh have to wear makeup, but we're saying wear makeup. <laughs> we're just saying, you know, we just wanted to present you with that information. Do with that what you will. Do with that what you will. So now we put on makeup every week. So now please I'm, watch. <laughs> now I'm like, I have to look good. <laughs> I put my hair in bubble braids for this. So please watch. So. I'm still scrolling. Know. I'm still finding it. I don't it. know where I was going with that. Hold on. It's loading. Oh my God. Trauma. Oh <laughs> no. I'm so embarrassed. Were you really off? Ugh. It was October 24th, 2018. Oh my God. That actually does sound familiar to off. me. Well, either way, three years. <laughs> Either way, three years, if you're new, we wear makeup <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, so come watch. And um, how have you been, girly? Bitch, I've been, I've kind of been just going through it. Oh, no. <laughs> no, and like, I'm going to say all this laughing and joking because obviously like I'm fine and it's kind of funny when you look at it when you're not in a dark place. <laughs> but like yesterday I was in my feels. Oh, no. This past week, I feel like we talked a little bit about it too the other day. Mm -hmm. I've just been down. I've been, you know, I was on my period last week, but- not anymore. So yesterday I was just like, what's, what do I do? I just, I canceled everything. I laid on the couch and I was like, what's the point? 
<laughs> I have no motivation for anything, which is so unlike me. So I think it also just like throws me down extra hard when I get in those moods because I'm like, what, what the fuck is this? I was like, I have no motivation for anything. Nothing's exciting me in life. I'm just going to sit here and rot away. And I was like, okay, fine. And then I felt like the universe, you know, God was, God understood. Then boom, starts raining. I was like, yes, I knew it. Like the whole world right now is just like going through it. Raining while it was also 98 degrees. Yeah, outside. it was also side note. That was weird. No, it was super weird. Yes. Yes. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to actually have a self care day, you know, Ooh. you know, she's been feeling a little, little on the edge of burnout on, in some ways. So I was like, let's address the issue. Let's fix it let's journal. I haven't journaled in months. My last entry, January. <laughs> oh, I like, find, I try to find my, my normal notebook that I write in with all of like my feels and shit. Couldn't find it. So I was like, well, I guess this one will do. And I look at that one and it says like January. And I was like, today was a great day. Da, da, da. And I was like, <laughs> cool. <laughs> so then, so then I left I, on a high note. I grab my journal. I'm just like, I'm not looking forward to nothing. And, nah, 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 nah. Oh. and I was just like, you just straight, like straight foods. <laughs> As I'm writing Dear on my phone. Dear diary. Dear diary. I hate everyone. <laughs> I have trust issues. I don't love anything in this world. Oh. Um, no, no, no. I'm fine. <laughs> then I was thinking, you know, oh, I listened to this podcast. Oh my gosh. Everyone needs to listen to it. Ed Milet, if you're watching this, please mentor me. I love you. I'm obsessed with you. And um, he was interviewing um, this girl. Her name was Mel, I believe. Ah, I'm so sorry if it's wrong. Basically, long story short, she was talking about the power of a high five, okay? It's life-changing. When I tell you it is life-changing, she goes into all of the statistics, right? The, the, the everything of how important and psychologically when you high five someone, like what happens then, you know? It's, it's insane, okay? So she started like high-fiving herself in the mirror when she was like really no, going through it. No, no. Sorry, no. No, listen to me. No. Don't even, don't even. Okay. No. Insane. No. Yes. So I, I gotta draw the line no, somewhere. No, no, I'm telling you. She They did this whole study about like um, NBA players and how all of the teams, like they can tell who will actually make it to the finals of who has the most like camaraderie and like team and energy. And because when you're high-fiving someone, it has nothing to do with the work that they're doing, but them as a person. So it's like the most uplifting thing ever. Or like, even when you're like celebrating, like dopamine happens when you like high five someone. Cause it's usually like at a sporting game or something like blah, blah, blah. She goes into the fucking brain. Right. And she basically was talking about high fiving herself and all this shit. So I was like, wow, this is crazy. And she was saying how, you know, like our brains are so powerful and we don't really like give ourselves enough credit. Like we have to be there for ourselves. If like no one else is going to be like, you have to root for yourself when in reality, like most people are always talking so down upon themselves and never just like, you got this. Like, not just like self-help, like, oh my God, I'm amazing. But very much like, that, like we're always so critical. Like whenever you look in the mirror, especially women, she said, usually find flaws instead of being like, you're a hot ass bitch. You know what I mean? So point being, high five yourself in the mirror. <laughs> Listen to the podcast. It's so good. Um, I promise it's not like weird. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not doing, I love the idea. I love, I love everything behind it. I'm not going to be high-fiving myself in the mirror. You can't make that decision until after you listen to the podcast. I've That's tried. All I'm say. I've literally, I had a friend in college who would tell me to wake up every morning, look at myself in the mirror and be like, you are the best bitch in the world. To me, that's better than high-fiving myself. I do that now. Okay, see? So whatever you got to do. Okay, okay, see. okay. <laughs> Make eye contact and say, you a bad bitch. You bad bitch. Okay. So needless to say, after yesterday, I'm like laying in my bed, <laughs> listening to this podcast, and I realized, okay, I need to take more care of myself. So I was thinking, I talk about this a lot with you guys, you know, people. Well, I talk about this publicly, but also my real friends in real life of how I always just black out random shit, not from drinking, just, you know, anxiety, whatever it is. I have no overstimulation, whatever, whatever it is where people will be like, what's your favorite movie? And I'm, I'm like, I don't know. Like I'm indecisive already. You know, the whole Libra rising thing, just I'm o already can't make a decision, let alone when it comes to things like that. And I hate that about myself because I should know my favorite restaurant. I should know, like, I should like take time to think about it. You actually pre said but, that. Yeah. But why don't you have those things top of mind? Because I just, boom. Really? Yeah, it's like a blackout, like blank. Like, I don't know. 
Very interesting. It's crazy. So obviously it's not fun to live that way. So I figured, why don't I like take myself on a date? Now, granted, I did this for a video where I got all ready and went to a restaurant. Um, This time I just didn't change or didn't get ready at all and just went on my couch with my journal. And I started making a list of everything I know about myself. That's great. I know. (laughs) I know. (laughs) I know. And it was just, it was whatever came to my mind. It was like favorite songs because what are my favorite songs? I don't know. Sunday Morning by Matoma. One of my all-time fucking favorite songs ever. Play it at my funeral. What song is that? I want to get high on a Sunday morning. Oh, yeah. I, I realize I like a lot of dance and EDM stuff. Also, um, I Want to Know by R.L. Grime featuring Dea. Okay. Yes. One of my all-time, like, and I was just like, what are my favorite songs? What are my favorite movies? Like, what are these things? So I, like, wrote them all down, and and then... um. I told Ollie what I did because he's always like the most supportive person just being like, you need to take care of yourself, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, oh, have you heard of this journal? I saw it on TikTok and sent me a link where it's a burn it journal, which I'm sure you guys have seen. Um, I bought one because basically it's this journal that asks real, I'm great when people ask me specific questions. Ashley's very similar. I think that's why like I get so along with TK because she's always like asking the most random off the wall questions that like you kind of have to answer. And this journal basically has things like, who broke your heart the most and then it has like a whole page for you to write about it and it's just like very intense deep questions that are really personal and the whole point is on the very front of it has um, matches so you're supposed to burn it afterwards um, which I thought was really cool so if anyone wants to get one also you should get it we can fill it out together and then we can have a bonfire and just fucking burn it all but maybe you shouldn't burn yours since you forget see that's what I was thinking keep it and I was like do I do I keep it but it made me realize there is something that comes to the idea of knowing it's gonna be gone so you can be more vulnerable and be Mm. real because deep down even when I like randomly journal sometimes I'm like is anyone gonna see this I'm like if I die is someone gonna read this (laughs) do you know what I mean I was listening to this um I forget which like something happened recently some some crime case happened but they read through someone's journal I don't like that but they got no, like they were able to find someone really from it. Yes. oh tea. so maybe you'll help in finding a killer or something. i truly don't think anyone could read my handwriting <laughs> <laughs> like so that was my day yesterday um we're feeling much better today i was like Good. i definitely was dare i say slightly depressed a little bit but it's okay i feel like we have those days i feel like also you are already going through it which sucks but that's like very normal and human but then you go through it twice because you always get into this headspace of this isn't me like i shouldn't be going through this and then like you're fighting yourself twice when just like let yourself feel it like we all go through bad days don't fight it maybe part of you is someone who just like needs to chill and do nothing that's okay I just had a light bulb moment But, like, you know what I mean? Like, don't fight yourself on it. Like, everybody needs to take a break sometimes. I know, but... No. Everybody (laughs) needs to take a break sometimes. Uh, Yes. Uh, Yes. It's okay. Why do you feel like you can't take a break sometimes? It's not that I don't want to take a break. I'm just like... No, no, no. I didn't say uh, why do you not want to. Why do you feel like you can't? (laughs) Sorry. Me. I'm so good with specific (laughs) questions. (laughs) Also me. (laughs) <laughs> do you want to lay down we can talk about it <laughs> i don't know i don't know i don't know go home and journal it and I'm come journal- back next yes. week with oh an my answer. god maybe i thought about making it a youtube video where i read the burn it journal where i'm like you know what this is all vulnerable no. shit no don't make it a video do this for you don't film it oh don't have it in, and See, then you're not going to be as vulnerable i know but then my my okay no right. no it would content, be so content. Good, it would be so good though you know it would be, but like, then you're going to hold back on things because there are things you don't want to share online that you would share otherwise. If you're not going to let random ass strangers solving a crime case read it, <laughs> then you're not going to write it down the, for the my video. FBI agents in my phone. Exactly. Like, yeah. do it for you and you only. Okay, fine. Well, great to hear that you're doing okay. <laughs> great to hear that you're like, okay. Today. Okay. <laughs> Um, no, yeah, but, but we're good. Other, but we did go on Saturday. We went to the VUV, the VUV, VUV, yes, classic polo match. Yes. And that was actually really fun. We had a, say it with me, friendship Friendship day. Day. (laughs) Guys, go ahead. Tell them. So, well, actually I would like to talk about my day first, actually, because yesterday I was walking the dogs. I I woke up in the morning and I said, you know what? I'm going to walk like the dogs today. And the dogs don't like to walk. A lot of people are always like, you never walk your dogs. Your dogs don't go outside. I'm like, trust me, they don't want to. No, Daisy will stop and literally be like, where is my stroller? Yes. <laughs> we walked, I'm not kidding, two streets over. And she was like, 
Baby. trailing so like behind me and you know you want them to walk in front of you because you want to keep an eye like trailing I was dragging her so I'm taking them for a walk and I'm like this is so cute but lately my dogs have been barking a lot more and I'm like they need to be Same. associated outside I think that's the thing they need to like see other dogs mm -hmm. and so we're walking Daisy used to be really quiet but Momo's brought up the barking in her so we're walking across the street and I see like um neighborhood dogs walking around whatever and there's a sweet old lady coming towards me and Daisy starts going and she has two dogs and Daisy's like Rah! And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. So then she walks over with her like 13 and 14 year old terriers that literally were like Eeyore energy. They were oh. like, so slow, so slow. That was me yesterday. And Daisy's going, yes. <laughs> Daisy's like, like ah! so I pick Daisy up. I'm like, I'm so sorry. We don't walk very often. And the neighbor's like, oh my God, girl, don't worry. Like, it's totally fine. Um, Like we all got to start somewhere. Da, 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 da. I was like, yeah, she was so nice. And so then I'm holding Daisy and Daisy's happy now that she's being held. She's literally like <laughs> smiling. And so then Momo's left on the ground alone. And so Momo was yapping too. And then of course, when the dogs start coming over, then Momo gets all scared because she's now not, she's not a big dog anymore. And so she starts backing up, backing up, pulls herself out of her harness, <gasps> is naked in the street, which is honestly not like, her being it's naked. Funny. It was like funny. It was a funny, like yeah. funny thing to see, but also then I was freaking out. Like, how do I get Because her? she was in the middle of the street naked with cars coming by. I'm literally and holding she Daisy. And also, you have to say, Momo is like, uh, she's a very um, skittish. Oh my so God. So when you go to pick her up, she sprints. So I, I understand what you felt. Yes. Not realizing, you're, you're like, you're gonna run into a car. Yes. Like you are going to do that. And normally, da like Daisy literally is like fine. She just sits there. But like Momo's, I'm getting next to her and she keeps running and running and running. So then fine, I'm like freaking out. The lady's like, let me hold the other dog. And I was like, oh no, it's fine. I put Daisy on the ground. She's literally just like, yeah. <laughs> leash on the ground, just standing there. So I'm like chasing Momo. My AirPods are in. So I like can't hear anything. I'm screaming. Finally, I get her. And I was like, so apologetic to the lady. And she's like, girl, it's so good. It's fine. So then she left. And then I was like, heart was racing. Yeah. And I was like, not having a good time. So then I was like, you know what? I'm going to listen to a meditation <gasps> while I walk. Oh, I love that. And I walked with Daisy, literally dragging Daisy. You're like, mom was like, doo, 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 doo. and so I'm listening, I'm like literally holding them like this. And I'm listening to this meditation and it was inspiring. So cool. I was, the only thing that I took away from it, to be honest, because I was still really stressed out about the dogs, was she said that pain is just a sensation. And if we didn't associate it with like a good or a bad feeling, it's just a thing that happens. And I was like, <gasps> That's a very interesting point. You know what I mean? I still have to listen a little more. I didn't fully listen all the way through, but I was like, that's a very interesting way to put it. It's like how we mentioned being embarrassed is really how you react versus yes. the actual feeling. Yes, mm. something like that. I mean, granted, of course, if you're in pain physically, I was or gonna say this physically, emotionally, like mentally, let yourself feel that spiritually, but then maybe it is like a, you know, I don't know. I have to keep listening. I was really stressed out about the dogs, but that was my day. <laughs> You're like trying to relax after all of that. Literally, I was like, she's naked in the street. <laughs> she's just like <laughs> running around. It was really funny to see. Oh my Anyways, God. Anyways, yes, that was my day. If you've ever dreamed of having the chance to win awesome prizes like a Tesla or experiences like karaoke with Charlize Theron or going to space in Virgin Galactic, then you have to check out Omaze, the new way to give back to charity and have fun doing it. I actually saw the Jonas Brothers are doing something. Really? Yes. Love I might, that. I might have to enter. Basically, you enter for the chance to win something amazing and at the same time, you can donate and support to great causes. It's a fun and easy way for nonprofits to raise money and for you to win some big prizes like a multi-million dollar house in Miami. Sign me up. I'm actually looking at the photos right now and I will be entering. <laughs> Am I allowed to enter? This is the most beautiful house. I don't Look think at that we pool. are. <laughs> Look at that jacuzzi. My God. Look at the bar. <gasps> Cooking with Remy at the bar. Pretty basic at the bar. <laughs> okay, guys, you can go to omaze.com slash basic and select the Miami dream house or a different experience of your choosing. Then choose a donation amount from $10 to $150. The more you donate, the more entries you'll get. Through your donations, Omaze has raised more than $150 million to support over 350 nonprofits all around the world. Omaze was named in Fast Company's 2020 Most Innovative Companies and featured on Good Morning America, The Today Show, and Stephen Colbert. Everyone deserves a chance to live their dreams, and with Omaze, extraordinary prizes are within reach for everyone. Enter today for your chance to win the Miami Dream House or other life-changing prizes and experiences at omaze.com slash basic. Plus receive 20 extra entries when you enter code basic. That's O-M-A-Z-E dot com slash basic. Back to the Vuv Clicquot thing. Allegedly, we have 
been pronouncing this completely wrong yes. as well as I would like I would say 95% of the entire world um I was always you know I always thought it was called Vuv I think Vuv sounds better personally I think it it's more, more fun Lux. to say Vuv yes. we were told by someone that it's called Vuv we're not sure still and they talked to the brand and the brand said yes it's Vuv because it's French V E U V E can someone I, I feel like Vuv just sounds more like Vuv. But apparently it's love, like love, like love. And let me tell you, I have seen for years that people have been going to the Vuv Clico Polo Classic. And there's like this VIP section where there's like all these crazy celebrities and influencers. And I've always watched and I've always been so jealous this year. An invitation graced my email. I freaked out. And Alicia and I already had a friendship day planned. And so we decided to go together as dates. My favorite thing is that, so obviously Remy and I work together, work together a lot. However, in order to make sure our friendship is still good, we were like, we need to have some time, you know, away from the, even though we still vlogged, (laughs) like away from the camera, like just like, you know, just a day just to chill and hang out. And we had said, we're like, let's, it just us, no one else. Like we're going to have a bonding day. And then we both get these invites. We're like, wait, wait, should we go? <laughs> but like, we still were able to continue our friendship day we and we, whilst there. We didn't bring plus ones because no. we were like, let's just have, well, it'll just be us. Like the good old days. Um, like and the good old the days. The good old days when we had no friends <laughs> except each other. <laughs> <laughs> just a little um, the accuracy nostalgic moment. Oh, <laughs> it was a wonderful time though. It was exactly, okay, wait, wait, let me back, let me back it up. So this is a, an annual thing that happens. Obviously, they couldn't do it last year, but the sh- very bougie champagne brand called uh, Vu, whatever, like, throws this on. I've only been one other time. I still feel as though they messed up giving us the invitation. No, yes. Like, we're not cool. Yes. And this is a very bougie, elite, prestige event. Yes. It was like my dream. I think truly had you asked me a few months ago like what is the one thing that you'd want to go to oh my god ever i would say this event <laughs> like i've been so lucky i've been able to go to the film festivals but i'm just like not the biggest movie See, i would love to go to sundance i mean it was wonderful very cold <laughs> You know, I don't love cold that much, but it was like a wonderful experience. But like for me, this, I think also because I just had never been invited and I always like, it's very like secretive almost where you mm-hmm. just see pictures. You don't get to see videos and things. Yeah. So you don't really know what goes on. Mm-hmm. So I've always been dying to go. And don't you guys worry, we vlogged. We vlogged it. And when you walk in, it was exactly what I imagined. Really? Exactly. So it's this event where obviously there's a polo match going on or multiple polo matches, but it's like this beautiful like field where they've just decorated it with all of like this orange and pretty yellow Vuv colors. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Vuv color. I'm gonna call it Vuv. Vuv <laughs> colors. There's like um, a VIP section and then there's like um, areas where you can buy tickets and then you can like go to like picnic there, or, like do whatever. I'm not really sure. But like we walk in, it's the most beautiful, like big grassy section. There's like an unlimited champagne bar in the back. Oh my God. There's like these cute couches that you can sit on in the front to watch the match. And then there's this giant table, literally a table the size of like five of my dining tables put together. That's just filled with a charcuterie board. People are like the people, the workers are coming out and just dumping tubs of like crackers and cheese and cucumbers like this, just out on there. And then there was like another section that had like all these, the most like amazing, like salmon and chicken. The heirloom tomato salad was like like bougie (laughs) food though. Like, but for like a a random event, there's like outdoor areas. There's like so many picture photo ops. It was incredible. Yes, food everywhere. We walk in, we see friends. We're like, oh my God, we know people. That was really cool. (laughs) I walk in, I lock eyes with none other than Lana Condor in person, in the flesh. The crowd goes wild. Woo! Replay every podcast where I talk about how much I love her and how I would, (laughs) like, no joke, any celebrity, I'd want to be friends with her. I thought you were going to say you would die for her, and I'm like, you would. That too. (laughs) I would just like to say she paved the way for Netflix films. I just need to say that. Mm. To all the boys I've loved before, fucking, like if it didn't do as well, I don't think Netflix would be what it is right now mm. because it was literally like the first one. Yeah. Regardless. And you guys had collabed before. Yes. But not in person. No, we did a Target collab. We did it like virtually and it was all through Zoom. So you know when you're on a shoot with like other talent, it's like they pull you in to do stuff and then when one person's doing stuff, the other
other person's doing socials or yeah. like vice versa. So we weren't able to like chat that much yeah. other than when we were filming. But still regardless, I was like, we're going to be besties. So I walk in, I lock eyes, I went, <gasps> And I strut my way right over. And I say, oh, my God, Lana. And she's like, oh, Remy, I already know you. I feel like we already know each other. Obviously, I love cooking with Remy, but we're going to hang out. Like, I'm officially here. We're hanging out. I was like, oh, <laughs> love. I'm still going to see if she'll maybe be on our podcast. Well, she was filming a movie last time, yes. but I think she's filming a show this time. She is. She's such a star. It's fine. I, I don't have to be here. Like, <laughs> no, like, you have to be here. You have to be here. We're all going to be besties. It's just the new Pretty Basic. <laughs> you and Lana. It would have been, it's going to be so good. Eventually we'll catch her when she maybe has a quick lull in her career, but like, I don't think that's happening anytime soon, but it was iconic and so nice. And I, oh, I feel like usually when I go to these events now, especially after COVID and quarantine and everything, I'm like so weird, but I feel mm -hmm. like finally I'm not being weird anymore. I'm also, used to it Also, we ran into Lauren and Mariana, who we literally just had on the podcast. So yes. that was so fun. We were like, oh my God, hey. I love it. They were so but nice. But see, to me, they're the type of people who would be invited to that type of event. Like they're so cool. They're so pretty. They're so chic. They're so effortless. And then- Can I say it? Can I say yeah. it? Yeah. Literally before we went, I was like, what do we wear? Who goes? Like, I don't know anything. She's like, imagine Mariana Hewitt. It's just that. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> So beautiful, <laughs> successful, nice yes. entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we saw them. They were so nice. We had a lot of fun. We definitely got very champagne, champagne drunk. Yes. Also at one point, we were just like, absolutely. We were bopping. We were bopping, but we were also losing our minds because, please. I don't, I don't, I really don't fangirl. Like really, you know? And in this moment, I fangirled and I loved it. I was like, oh my God, I missed this. Like, But you didn't even fangirl like a normal fangirl. <laughs> no. This was her. We were having a conversation and we were like, oh yeah, so the weather, da, 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 da. <gasps> so anyways, yeah, the weather. And I was like, that was really weird. She glitched, like, but I didn't even ask. Yeah, it was a simulation glitch. I yes. was like, da, 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 da. Oh my God. But anyways, <laughs> yes. that was my but fangirling. I didn't ask, but I didn't know until much later you were like, oh my God, Justin Hartley's here. Is that him? Yes. I was like the guy from This Is Us. I was yes. like, oh, he's so hot. But then you're like, I fangirled earlier. And I was like, oh, was that her face? That was me fangirling. You that was any me attention. fangirling. I was just like, oh my God. Um, and gotta then, let a bitch know though. Like I didn't see him. You have to be like, I know. The, oh my my God, only thing is, especially that set, like setting, we were even, we were sitting next to people. I kept, kept seeing people and I was like, you look familiar. Wait, is it because I actually know you? Is it because like- I've seen you on I've TV. I've seen you on TV. Is it because you're an influence? Like, and then you, know, I never want to ask people what they do because then they get all weird and offended. So yeah. I'm just like, like we, that girl who was sitting next to us. Yeah. I, I was like, I know you from somewhere, but I don't want to be like, oh my God, I know you. She and was like, very rude She was also. a little, so I didn't want to say anything too loud. Cause I'm like, I don't know who's sitting next to me. Like there were so many people. I also saw the mom um, from Ginny and Georgia. Yes. I did not expect to freak out. I was like, oh, she's so pretty. She's so she's pretty. She's stunning. Well, she was literally behind us having a conversation with the girl who stars in Manifest. Like it, it was, was like, like a crossover. Two worlds colliding. I loved Judy and Georgia. I loved Manifest. And they were having a conversation. And like, those are two completely opposite shows. Oh, completely. And I was just like, this is so weird. Yeah. I was living. Yeah. So it was really cool. Definitely was like, oh, what are we doing here? I saw some Bachelor people who I'm big fans of. And so I was just like, but I didn't say anything, obviously. I was just like. Also, I've talked oh about God. this a million and oh one God. times. Oh but. If you have anxiety and you can't see, <laughs> let me change your life. Get context. I could see people, like people watching it <laughs> was so much more fun. I was look, I was like, wow, oh my God, that's that person. That's that. I was like, well, what did I do before? I, I, I just looked at the ground. You I literally just looked at the ground. I told you for years to wear contacts and you wouldn't listen. I didn't think mine was that bad. I was like, oh, I don't need it. Like people are gonna be like, oh, you don't need them. Little did I know. I was like, wow, life is so much fuller. It's so much, there's so much more color. Like, Why I can, not have 20-20 vision if you can, bitch? I literally was like, wow, no, like, I, there's so many, like, what the fuck? My favorite is like, sometimes we'll be driving or we'll be just, we'll just be somewhere and she'll just whisper like, oh my God, I can see. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my God, that's so sad. Uh, yeah, so point being, I actually think it's helped me a lot because now I can tell that people are looking at me or they aren't looking at me where before I was just like, I don't know what to do. Does that make sense? 
No, yeah, I get that. It's just like very sad. I know. I t- I talk about it so much because it's changed my life. But um, you're like one of those little kids. That's what that's what breaks my heart. You know, I think about this often. If when I become a parent, you're not able to know if your kids have if they need visual correction because like how, how they don't know their children. They're like they don't know what it's supposed to look like. They don't know like what's. I possible. always remember teachers or my parents being like can you see the board like yeah. that at, at school like that was always the the question it's so sad i mean granny of course you can take them to the optometrist i got glasses in like second grade or so really yeah i had like little <laughs> cat eyes with like diamonds of course you did <laughs> how long did it take you to pick them out a very no not actually here's the thing not long because i always know what i want it was just the convincing my parents to buy me diamond glasses but Suze did she did and my dad was probably so mad he was like what you can't wear this to church <laughs> i would pay money to see your like church outfits when you were little oh my god were you ever in cotillion no, but okay. I know what it is. Yes. Yeah, so in case you don't know, Cotillion is like um, lessons that you go to learn manners. Mm-hmm. And so I went to Cotillion's when I was young and it would be like at a country club and you walk in and you learn you like, like wear, dress up, you dress up, you wear, <laughs> you wear dresses, but like, you know, girls would wear like little dresses that you wear on like your cruise, like a fifth grade cruise ship. You, you know, the dress I'm talking about. They're like that stretchy polyester. That's like um black and white. I have pictures. I will insert them here. <laughs> black and white. They're like stretchy and they've got like a little flower detail but instead my mom would send me in literal flower girl dresses but I loved it obviously the tulle is just like no I have pictures they would be like full-on like bodices at the top with tulle but then the tulle would be layered in a loop so there would be flower petals in the tulle and so then you go and you learn like where your silver goes, how to tie a tie, um, you know, how to dance with, my, with boys. My parents things. were like, nah. <laughs> I mean, do I remember any of it? No, but it was a great I'm time. I'm sure the dancing with boys, you really. Oh my God. <laughs> I got to you. dance with like, um, what's Luke Forgay. Oh, Luke. that's who I had a big crush on or Drew Williams. Drew. They were the two. Imagine they watch this. They won't, but like imagine one day. Kaylee, send this to them. <laughs> oh no. She texted me because I accidentally outed her about the Mexico Revolve trip oh. because I kept saying like, oh, I'm not going to say who. And then I kept saying Mexico Revolve. Yeah. So people commented on her Instagram. They're like, is this the trip? And she said it to me and I was like, I'm so sorry. Yo, people figure shit out. She loved it. But yeah, that's Hat. funny. Hat. Hat. That was bad. Join Macy's every Tuesday and Thursday at 4 p.m. for Macy's Live, hosted by top fashion and beauty experts and influencers covering everything you need to express your personal style. Tune into Live Style for inspo and insights on how to make the latest trends work for you and to find new twists on your go-to faves. And check out Live Beauty for insider tips on new beauty releases, how-tos, and must-have products that your routine needs now. It's all over at macys.com slash macys live. Also, I have to talk about this just for like five seconds because I need to get it off my chest. Um, But you probably won't have... You won't care. No spoilers, but the end of Squid Game had me fucking pissed. That's all I'm going to say. And here's the thing. Last night I was watch. I never watched shows by myself. I watched the whole thing by myself. So you know it's good. <gasps> you know it's scary? Good. No, I don't see gore and blood and fighting don't bother me. Demonic and horror like that bothers me. Okay. So this was something I could definitely handle. Like blood for whatever. I told you my For You page is all like surgery TikTok. I'm like fascinated okay. by that shit. Okay. So it wasn't scary. It was just like intense, you know? I'm watching it. It's the last episode. I genuinely told myself, not out loud, but in my head. I was thinking. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, sorry. Keep going. I was thinking, oh my gosh, people are really shitting on this ending. I think this is a great show. Like this was amazing. I I understand that there's a few things that, you know, I might've changed, blah, blah, blah. As I'm thinking this, as the last thought is flowing out, bam. Oh no. The plot twist happens. I'm fucking pissed. I was like, why are you mad? Because it ruined everything. Oh, and really? I'm just, I, I don't, I can't do spoilers, but I literally was filming myself and I was like, no. No, no, livid, livid. Um, still one of the best shows I've ever seen in my entire life. So you have to watch it. Will that deter you away from season two? No. Watching season two? I'm actually okay. excited for season two. Okay. Because I do, they left it very, there was just, you'll, you'll get it. Anyone, my DMs last night, everyone was like, that's how I felt. T-. I was so pissed. Really? I walked in on Cal in his room watching it. I didn't know he was watching it. And I 
walk in. Oh, he probably might be mad I say this. No, he's fine. I walk in and he's crying. Oh. But it was at episode six. I don't know oh, what I that know. means. I know. But yeah, I, know. I, I was like, are you okay? It, uh, he has to text me when he's done because literally I need to talk about He finished about it already. <gasps> yeah. Go talk to him about it. He'll love it. He That's my favorite thing about Cal is like, I always look forward to watching movies with him because he likes absolutely analyzes, analyzes them after. And I've thing. never done that before. I usually leave leave the, the movie. I'm like, no thoughts, no, no thinking. <laughs> Never but like, thinks about it again. But now I'm like, wow, it's really fun. I also forced Alicia to watch Spirit in a Way. Can I just say very different than what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> like I heard that there was a spa. It was a spa. <laughs> but like <laughs> not what I thought. She asked me, I was like explaining to her at dinner and I was like, oh wait, let's go home and watch it. And she's like, yeah, what's it about? I was like, um, this girl and her parents, she, she, she goes, goes to a, a spa. Tun- <laughs> she's like, I don't want to give it away, but they go through this tunnel and then she kind of works at this spa. And I was like, okay, dope. She's a masseuse. <laughs> when I tell you, there were, I was just like, have you seen this? Oh, my gosh. It's so good. Well, and Remy and Cal literally said verbatim, this is the best movie in the entire world. So I had high. I was just like, what? it wasn't bad. I wasn't even on my phone once. No. I was. I was very intrigued. And the great lessons but i def it was just like a whirlwind and then i told remy afterwards i was like i (laughs) there's like all these like little like spirits and monsters and like things right i tell remy afterwards i was like i think this is the best like accurate way i could even say what my zoloft dreams are kind of like (laughs) did you feel seen Hi, Miyazaki made you feel seen. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Studio Ghibli movies are so beautiful in the symbolism. It's just like, they're always in very interesting characters. And like, oh. it, it's just like nothing you would ever think of other than you, obviously. Yeah. But the symbolism is so incredible. And you're just like, everything. The music is the ba- so good. The, baby. the big fat baby is so good. It's so good. And then I was like, how can you just be friends with that thing after everything that happened? <laughs> if you know what we're talking about. Mama, <laughs> let her go. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is happening? If you're mean to her, I'm never going to be your friend. <laughs> so Wait, that was kind of good. That was really good. Um, but yes, we did watch that. Yes. Um, that was really interesting. Did you watch Clickbait? Wow, I could talk about all the shows I've been I, watching. I so haven't, much. but I saw that you made Cal watch it. I, you have a thing for making people watch movies. I love it, <laughs> especially because if I get scared, then I have someone to talk to about it, to talk, talk me up a little. Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to say cuddle, and I got triggered. <laughs> <laughs> the face. You see my face? <laughs> face. Like, well, Alicia. Not all of us have people to cuddle with, Rem. <laughs> Alicia, I thought you were gonna make me cuddle when we watched Spirited Away, and so I was specific. I like laid five feet away. I social distance on the couch, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "It's weird without Ollie there, you know." Yes, Ollie's a cuddle buddy. Remy is not a physical touch person. Where I am all for the cuddles, and you know what I learned more recently. We might have talked about because this because of TikTok. No, actually, oh. I don't know how I learned this, but. Like, I always thought that love languages were a, like a one-way thing. Like, it's about you either only receive or you only give one. But I've learned it's both. And you like, can have multiple. I have two different kinds yeah. of, like, one receiving and one giving. Like, I've learned that I like to receive words of affirmation, but I like to give gifts. Ooh. Like, that's I'm, how I am. I'm a gift giver. But you're also physical touch. But I also want physical touch. Mm-hmm. So that's what I want and mm-hmm. need. But what I give is... So me cuddling you is for me, not for you. Yes, I'm, I'm very well aware. <laughs> I'm like, I want to cuddle. And when I'm like, I'm going to throw her a bone. Yeah, yeah, you're like, fine, just two seconds. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can feel you counting down in your head, like 10, <laughs> 9. Okay, that's good enough. What do you um, give? Give gifts. Okay. Um, I also like... I think you like acts of service. Acts of service. Yeah. I was going to say, I think that's something my dad always does that. And Ashley is like that too. Yeah. So I think yeah. in my head, I don't naturally think of that right away but like if I was to live on my own I'd be like wait someone give but me there'd coffee. be so many things where you're like oh my god I didn't realize like she does this yeah. for me as her way of showing love for yes. you yes Cal's an acts of service yeah definitely yeah, acts for of sure. service yeah I feel like the like week I met him I was like ah he's an acts of service it's, I feel like it's also just a dad thing well he's not a dad but like he's just like he yeah. gives dad energy it's just like taking like yeah I don't know under your little wing yeah my dad too it's like he comes over he's like what oh, needs fixing like What's around the house? Is everything looking good? Oh my God. We literally, love language. Remember, okay. Like 
my dad will be like, hey, give me a list to do. So whenever he comes over, we give him like a list of different Aww. things. We're like, so the water thing that broke and then the <laughs> thing and then the, uh, and I'm like, thanks for living near us. It's so sweet. What am I going to do without you? Aww. Yeah. How was it thinking you were going to move into a whole house by yourself? No thoughts. Me leaving a movie. No thoughts. <laughs> no I didn't. Thoughts. It didn't like occur to me. The iMovie crickets. I would be living. <laughs> I didn't think about living alone it's a full-time job just even taking care of a property well I think also I like I obviously knew I was buying a house and I had, I've lived alone for so many years and I did really well living alone I was like an independent bitch took care of everything on my own the only thing would be maybe like in the apartment complex if the fridge broke like yeah because you you're paying for that yeah, then yeah they, you call maintenance I wasn't prepared to live in a house alone like I didn't realize I wasn't and now living in a house I'm like oh, there's so much stuff that needs to get done all the time that you don't Realize. I'm just thank God that like Cal moved in because of COVID because I don't like what do you he does so much around the house so much so kind so, so kind. kind so kind <laughs> acts of service we love we love um comment below if you're watching this on YouTube what's your love language we need that engagement <laughs> <laughs> I really should have put that at the beginning fuck <laughs> so I have very big news everybody oh do I know this I don't know if you know yet but I am officially an LA bitch and I'll be injecting my face very <gasps> soon. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm very nervous. So obviously, I mean, obviously we all know like the LA lifestyle, you get like Botox and filler and plastic surgery, which like do whatever the fuck you want. No judgment, Never but I just personally choice. haven't done it yet. I've always heard from like you and Lauren, everybody like, Preventative Botox is good but to you get also soon. Are, are you like, yes, but also like I would be so honest. If I'm like, oh yeah, like I can see like your skin's perfect, but I get that it is preventative. But like, it's per you you're it's perfect. Can you raise your eyebrows for me? Oh, do you see those lines? Yeah, but don't you get Botox? Yeah, well it fades. Oh, mm -hmm. but honestly, I like having movement no, in my you forehead. Want, so I tell them to do it really natural okay. because I like, I am really expressive yeah. and I don't want to be like Jennifer Coolidge <laughs> and like, yes. you know, not be able to move. And my mom, every time I was a kid, if I raised my eyebrows, she'd be like, stop you're going to get wrinkles. So now I like feel really weird if I raise my eyebrows. Okay. But that's good because there's this TikToker or there's a few actually, and they'll show how to like work out your face muscles to where you don't need Botox. And like, ah. you basically learn to like do expressions that like don't use those muscles and whatever. I feel like I move here down. I just don't move my forehead very much. If it's like, <gasps> like my mouth is <laughs> Pikachu. <gasps> <laughs> Insert that. Well, yeah. So, anyways, I have really bad TMJ in my mm -hmm. jaw. I've had it for years, and I get yours really is really. Mine's okay. Yours is bad. Anyways, my jaw's always popping out of place, and I've had like tons of issues with it. It's because my teeth are so big, and I have a really small mouth, and they just move. And it's always been an issue. I started or my orthodontist journey at second grade Ugh. and so I've just I've gone through a lot yeah so anyways with that being said I have really bad headaches and things so I've heard that you can put Botox in your masseter your muscle your masseter muscle I've I did that and it actually ah, did help a lot good uh, I will say though it does fade like after six months it fades so like I feel oh, like I can bad. already feel it <gasps> wait I just realized they're gonna put needles in my face does it hurt I feel like I was so excited. I didn't have, think about the pain. She goes, I'm getting injected. <laughs> I was like, wait, that's a needle. Have you had, um, do you like, or how do you, how are you with needles? I like don't love, but I'm okay. You'll be fine. Okay. Do they numb? Sometimes if you Shut want it. Up. They They'll, don't numb you? I, I They will. It's fine. Okay. You'll be good. Well, so anyways, speaking of LA lifestyles, mm -hmm. <laughs> Tiff texted and she's like, hey, does anybody want to go to my Botox person? They're running a special for Halloween. It's a Botox <laughs> special. It's like certain amount of money per unit. Da, 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 da. But I was like, Botox, <laughs> Botox, Botox. Well, how adorable is that? But also like only in LA would like, they be running a Botox sketch? special. Um, maybe the they just got... Oh, I didn't even consider this. That's the one thing. <laughs> the one thing I ever worry about is like BOGO. I'm like, Buy one, get one free. Like, do I want free and like, do, is do, that good? Does Botox expire? Like maybe they just need to get, get rid of some soon. I don't know. Maybe I should do a little more research. I can give you some research, but I also don't want to freak you out. Ooh, <laughs> what is the research? So. Oh no, <laughs> I, I won't be getting it anymore, everyone. <laughs> 
I don't want to freak you out. But now I'm curious. Like I have to say it. Oh okay. my god. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> okay. So in certain kinds, so talk to your doctor beforehand. Um, you're not allowed to lay down for like a few hours afterwards because it can go to like your heart. <gasps> in very, very, very <sighs> rare cases. But in reality, it's like like I've talked to doctors before and they're like, oh yeah, like not really, but just don't lie down flat. Like don't get it and then lie flat right after. So usually every time I have anxiety, the whole first day after getting Botox, cause I'm like, don't lay down. And then I go to sleep and I'm like, I'm canceling. I'm not <laughs> no, no, doing no, no. it anymore. But I, prom- I, pro- I promise. I'm not doing it anymore. I promise. I'll sit through the pain. No, no, no. no. I promise. And then, so, um, <laughs> sorry, this is, so- I was gonna say the guy that I go to, that's not a thing. Cause it does it immediately. Cause normally it takes a week for it to kick in. Oh. Like you get your Botox and like you, you will not actually notice it for like a week. It like takes a while to actually set in, but um, my guy's instant. So oh. and you don't have to worry about laying down. Is he running a Botox special? He does not have a Botox okay, special. Then <laughs> but he'll probably like he'll probably give you a discount or something. Do you go to the Kardashian ones? Is that the one we're talking about? Uh Kenodia, I really like it. Uh, okay, okay. Um, so yes. Will I or will I not? You will know in a few weeks. <laughs> if I'm not here, then you know it went south. Um, as long as well as the Botox to my heart. Yes. Do your research. <laughs> Keep asking may, questions. May I, may I not recommend buy one, get one free specials? <laughs> It wasn't a buy one, get one. It was just a no, discount. No, at least it's her guy that she's been to. I Like, just if it's your first time. if you've Okay, this is my advice. If it's your first, never mind. Never mind. That goes, <laughs> I, that goes against everything you're doing right now. I was going to be like, if it's your first time ever getting injectables or Botox or anything like that, don't go f- as a special for your first time. But then I realized that's what you were going to be I doing. have a friend who went as a special for their first time, and they didn't tell her everything. She slept and it, like, moved around. Oh, no. So her one okay eyebrow now. was higher than it's the other. It's okay now. But yeah, it was pretty oh, no. bad. It Point was, being, um, just uh, uh, you know, keep being curious. curious. We love, we love some Yelp reviews. Keep asking questions. <laughs> If you guys are looking for fine jewelry, then you need to check out Orate. It was founded on the desire to shake up the jewelry market by offering modern women beautiful designs, amazing quality, and at affordable prices. Also, did I mention that they're ethically sourced pieces? We love ethically sourced. We love a brand that is founded by women, for women, girl power. It's also real gold, so you can wear it and never have to take it off. You can shower. You can work out. You can just live your life and never have to worry about your jewelry. Literally me. I am very um, sensitive to like just cheaper metals and materials and stuff. So I I love when I can not have to take, I never take my rings off. Like the fact that I can just shower, work out in these, it's amazing. Also what's amazing is that their jewelry is sustainably made. Their gold is never mined. Their gemstones and diamonds are also certified conflict-free. So you can feel good about the jewelry that you're wearing. Know that it's coming from a good place and overall just great quality. Also, you can use Klarna to shop with them and pay over time. They're also very transparent about their pricing. So you never get any random hidden fees or anything like that, which we also love. For 20% off your first Orate purchase, go to oratenewyork.com slash basic and use promo code basic. That's 20% off with no minimum spend and they rarely have discounts as high as 20% off. So we really encourage you to shop now while it's going on. This is the best offer out there and it's exclusively for you guys. A-U-R-A-T-E newyork.com slash basic and use promo code basic to get 20% off. Okay, well, I don't know if you know, but I've recently gone pretty viral on TikTok. Wait. Do I not know this? Not really like that viral, but like oh. actually I've been doing pretty well on TikTok when I do post. And one thing that I did, what was the trend? It was, um, are you shitting my dick? You yes, know that one? Yes, okay. Yes. So I did that one and I did it with that audio and I put on the, the text me in high school when I was told that once I contracted MRSA, I might have to amputate my leg. And then it was, are you shitting my dick? Which is funny. And so... <laughs> It did pretty well. And then all the comments were like, wait, what? What? Like, can story time, please? And there was one girl that was like, oh my God, when you talked about this on Pretty Basic, I was dying. And then someone replied back and they were like, oh my God, which episode? And she was like, oh, it was very, very early on. So I figured that this would be a fun little quick segment to do where we bring back old stories. Obviously, it's been three years. Obviously, we have new listeners. And obviously, now we're on video. So it's much more fun to see my expressions while I'm talking. Also, we've gotten a lot better at uh, talking in general, talking about myself. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I would be like, yeah. Yeah, so fun. So I feel like it'd be good to just like 
brush back on old stories, yeah. things that we've chatted about. Oh my and God. Or even just go more in detail with certain things. Yes. And also we have photos. I did have my mom check the archives oh and God. we will insert them in video because it's going to be so much better. But if you are a queasy person, well, it describe. is pretty gross. We'll so describe. just maybe not look, not look. The year is 2013. Mm-hmm. I am a senior in high school. Oh. I am on the dance team. Oh. Uh, I can't remember if it was song or dance. It was song team. So it's like song is like dance and cheer had a baby together. So you're doing like a lot of like on your knees, like hi V and you're like rolling around on the ground and stuff. So we at my school would practice in what was called the quote unquote small gym, which is also where the wrestlers would practice. Mm. So I am in high school. I'm shaving my legs and I, I get the tiniest little nick on my leg right on my kneecap, tiny, 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 maybe like, a quarter of an inch, so small. I'm like, oh no, no worries. I cut myself all the time while I'm yeah. shaving and I move on with my life. Usually I don't put a band aid because it'll just scab and it'll yeah. be fine. So I didn't put a band aid on. I go to song practice. We're doing our routine. I'm in the front rolling around and everything's moving on. And then right after song practice, I had dance team practice and we were practicing for what we called the May show, which was like the big showcase, big recital. Was that the one that you and Murph showed or Murph showed me? No, that was ASB. Oh, camp. that was so. So good. <laughs> that was so That's good. for another day. Yeah, another day. I don't think I ever told that story That's though. So Did he funny. tell you how we got fucking oh, bullied? Him and Carol. High school fucking bullied? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so. His mom. So. Anyways, back to my story. So. I'm rolling around. I go to dance practice and I'm like, I remember I was being, I was in the wings and I was like, oh shoot. The, it's starting to bleed a little bit. <laughs> my scab had oh, no. come off. And I was like, oh, I didn't notice it come off probably while I was practicing. I was like, it's fine. I don't have a Band-Aid, but we're like, I'm literally in the wings about to go on stage. So instead I see that there's a roll of painter's tape on the ground. So I'm like, oh, I'll just put a piece of tape on because it'll just cover, which still to this day, I don't think is that bad of an idea. Is it really bad? I, I, mean, I mean, do what you most- gotta do. Some, when you're in those moments where you don't have a Band-Aid or you don't have a tissue. You yes. just gotta, you gotta work with what you got. Exactly, you know? and to me, I was like, it's an adhesive. It'll stick on, it'll it'll provide a cover. Mm-hmm. So I put the little painter's tape on and I move on with my life. And then uh, lo and behold, my knee, something starts happening to my knee. I'm not quite sure. Roll the first picture. So my knee starts, you know, it's starting to look a little infected. Insert photo here. <gasps> Why was it green? I'm not sure. Maybe well, it was molding. No, green is definitely a sign of, uh, you know, infection. Probably. So but that's not that bad. It no, was like green. I think that was green. From, from a razor cut. Is that bad? From like you were shaving and it was a cut from your razor. Yes. Yeah, that's bad. Okay, well, <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't hurt that bad. Okay, from but what I can I've, remember. Ne- I've never in my life cut myself. And Look, that. you can see like the Band-Aid from it. Aww. Anyway, so it was just, it was turning green. I remember being like, ooh, that's probably infected. No, do, yeah, do you see the, the like the, the discoloration? Yeah, the green. The, even your blood, like, oh. like, it looks like, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> it looks like it was molding on the inside of my leg. So, you know, I, I am a little alarmed. I show my mom, my mom was a nurse and she loves to like, you know, nurse me all the time. So she'd be like, okay, we're going to the hospital. This is not good. Yeah. So I went to the hospital and they said, oh, you have a staph infection. (gasps) We're going to give you this medicine called menthicillin. And you're going to take this. I believe it was like an oral tab, like some sort of pill. And they're like, put on this cream and then you're going to be fine. And like, it's cool. I'm like, okay. So I'm taking the medicine. Week goes by. It's getting worse. I'm like, oh my God. And I'm starting to get pain in my leg. (gasps) Oh no. It was not going so hot. And it, the infection is getting worse and worse and worse. Next clip. Yeah. Oh, it's so gross. I'm so sorry. I love this shit. (laughs) And Q, this is my (gasps) knee now. Oh, no, not now. (laughs) Not now. But I'm like, sorry, TK. (laughs) I'm like, "Mm, I don't think the medicine's working. (laughs) My leg looks like this. It literally looks like my leg is eating itself. And you can see the skin is all like, like gross all around. So how long was this after? Honestly, it was years ago, but I'd say probably a a, a couple weeks or so. Like, so, but I'm taking the antibiotics. I'm being really diligent with everything. It takes like 10 days for it to like kick in. And and you're supposed to like finish it antibiotics all the way through. I'm like, finish it. I'm like doing it. I'm like, mom, it's not getting better. It's not getting better. So she's like, this is not good. So she takes me to the hospital again and they're like, oh my God. 
we're so sorry. It's actually MRSA, which is still a staph infection. It's just much worse and highly contagious. And also- Isn't it always in your blood after too? Um, kind of. So they're like, it's really bad. And actually MRSA stands for menthicillin resistant, resistant. staphylococcus, yeah. which is a staph infection. So like they were giving me the one medicine that, that I was- wouldn't work. Literally not working. So I'm getting worse and worse. It's being untreated. <laughs> And so they're like, oh my God. I remember I was told like, if it, if it gets worse than this, if it really doesn't start turning around, we might have to amputate. And I was like, what did you do? I'm going to college. I, um, well, I was definitely freaking out. And so then you saw the like gunk in my knee. Yeah. They literally take that out of my knee and my knee has a gaping hole, hole inside. A hole in my leg. You could literally see my fucking flesh. And so then my mom was like, they're like, oh, she needs to come back to the hospital every day and we'll pack it for her. Packing meaning they oh. take in gauze, they take gauze and they need to fill the Clean hole it. so that obviously like nothing can get inside, bacteria can Do get inside. Do you have a bad scar? It's actually gone. I was like, I've I was never seen too. a scar. Let's see. It was right here. Yeah, no, <gasps> it was like here-ish, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's gone. Oh my God, I haven't shaved my leg. So sorry. Um, so yeah, they're like, she needs to pack it. So they take like thin strips of gauze and they like, they like Zig-zag accordion it. it yes. Yeah, so that it fills inside. And they're like, she needs to come to the hospital every day. And I don't think I was driving. And my mom was like, this is highly inconvenient for me. So <laughs> she was like, I'm a nurse. Can, Can I, just I just pack it, it for her? Yeah. Which is so nice. And so I was, they're like, yeah, totally. So she was doing it every day for me. And it was so fucking painful. Oh, I bet. Because imagine literally stabbing shit. So it's like, it's filling in the hole. There can't be like um, air pockets or anything. They're literally stabbing in your leg, just like feeling it in your knee. Um, eventually it did heal though. And it was okay. Did you have to quit song? No, I was okay. I think I just wasn't able to like practice, which I was like, thank God. Yeah, or like, like on or- the sidelines. <laughs> Oof. But I think it was around our dance show and I think I had to like pull out of some stuff or so. I forget uh, exactly. It was fine. I'm literally fine. But they didn't tell me that. So staff or sorry, they didn't tell me that MRSA is in your bloodstream. Yeah. And I actually was just looking this up after the TikTok because I was like, oh, I've really never done that much research after. And it literally said in the Google search that I did that it will stay in your bloodstream and often affect other areas after. I didn't know this at the time, but when I was in high school, then after my knee healed, I started shaving my body again. You know, my legs. Yeah. I was shaving my down here region. And oh, I got a cut <gasps> here. No. And all of a sudden, it starts happening on my vagina. Uh, Not like in, but like on top. On right here. It's literally right here. I do have a scar there still. So then I literally have to start packing that area. Stop. Uh-huh. And so then I remember one time I had to like literally, like, you know how I do this couch thing where I'm like, yeah, no, baby. I literally had to lay on that, like the couch so that they could like reach my vagina and like fill it with the, also the gauze. And then that happened. And then after that, I didn't have a flare up again and I've been okay since, but that was but my I- story. Thanks, wrestlers who probably gave it to me. But like, it's so common. Staph, MRSA, ringworm, things like that from those disgusting mats. Well, I was just thinking, because I did cheer for years. Mm-hmm. I never once cleaned. Like we never had to like, san- especially now after COVID, how we sanitize everything. Yes. I remember always rolling up the mat- yeah. mats after practice, but I never myself sprayed it, which makes me, I'm like, and I don't think smelly. anyone ever did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, after that, it was pretty bad. But I've heard that you can actually cure MRSA by taking, I think it's hydrogen peroxide on a Q-tip and you just swab your nose. Like it lives in your nose, apparently. And you can just kill the bacteria in there. You swipe like 10 times, 10 times for like a week or so. And apparently it goes away. That's what my mom said. And she, I think she made me do it. But, and I haven't had an issue since. But isn't that so weird? That's... I'll be sure to tell everyone from my TikTok to come here to listen to the story time. That's insane. Yeah. It was pretty gnarly. I'm so glad you didn't have to amputate your leg. Me too. Look you at her. You She's wouldn't be able thriving. to do the <gasps> Oh my God. Literally someone commented on TikTok. What would the world have been without Remy being able to do the split? <laughs> <laughs> so that was a trauma moment for me. But anyways. Damn. Yeah. I really want to go back to some of our older episodes and listen to stories or react to some of them. We need to do the wall story again. Oh, but that <laughs> one, I think that one was one of my favorite i don't think you guys know that even story. the content baby content one like, oh my god that, i really i i i was always so scared that guy was gonna try to sue us i <laughs> thought he was gonna come kill me i thought he was gonna sue us for we should trademark that i hope he's okay <laughs> <laughs> let me let me get let me call my lawyer <laughs> <laughs> anyways thank you guys so much for listening to pretty basic don't forget to follow us on you know everywhere that we are and um if you're listening to the audio go watch the video format if you want to see my knee i promise you the pictures do not disappoint 
Uh, if you can't handle that, I would not. Or we'll censor. An, we'll, it's just a big blur. I'm like, wait, but watch it because we want the engagement. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put the time. Yes. Oh, yeah. We'll put a trigger warning for sure. Trigger on them. warning. Follow us on TikTok. We've been going viral lately. We're so annoying. We're so annoying. Love you guys. <laughs> Go to the Vuv Clico once. We've We're been going, going viral. viral. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Uh, love you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.